So graphically, let's just represent our equilibrium condition. Okay. So let's represent it graphically. Now, so we're going to have employment on the x-axis. We are going to have tightness on the uh, y-axis. We're going to have our labor We're going to have our labor force here. Okay, so you remember that the supply is always going to look something like this. That's what we had established. That the labor supply at theta. You remember that we had introduced a tightness theta m at which demand is equal to zero, and then the demand was going to look something like this. Okay, so that's our labor demand at theta, and then in equilibrium, so for our model to be internally consistent, it has to be that the tightness is going to be given here. So this tightness that um, workers and firm take as given is going to be given by the point where labor demand is equal to labor supply. So here we have what we call the equilibrium tightness, which we can call it um, theta star, and here we're going to have, okay, um, and so here we're going to have equilibrium employment, okay, so this is a level of employment uh, where uh, firms behave optimally, workers behave optimally, uh, and furthermore your model is internally consistent, so that firms and workers take as given a tightness that's actually realized in equilibrium. Okay, so that's what we can expect to happen uh, on the market. You know, otherwise, if that didn't happen, the model will be consistent. People will expect something and it wouldn't happen, and so you need to have some kind of adjustment to get to a point where what they expect is actually realized. Um, so we have that, uh, that condition here for internal consistency, that uh, equilibrium condition. Uh, so we have a tightness, we have an employment, but what's quite beautiful too is that here in equilibrium, we also have uh, unemployment. So how can we read unemployment here on the graph? Well, you know that unemployment, u is h minus l. Uh, h is given here, l is here, so u in equilibrium, u star, which is the equilibrium level of unemployment is going to be, you're going to be able to read here. It's the distance between employment and um, the size of the labor force. Okay, and so you can see here, although everybody is behaving rationally, although your model is in equilibrium, you do have some unemployment. Okay, that, that prevails. So here, unlike the neoclassical model where in equilibrium there is never any unemployment, uh, so everybody who wants to work can work, here you have some unemployment, so you have workers who would like to work at a given wage, but they are unable to find a job. Okay, so now we have a model that explains why that is the case. Okay, um, so we can we can see all of that, and something that that's good to remember too is that um, among the employed, so people that uh, we have here. In fact, it's good to remember that this uh, employed worker will be split into two categories. So here, if we would have among these L workers, we would have some workers that are uh, producers and stars, and we'll also have some workers that are going to be recruiters and stars. So it's good to remember that uh, in the firm, workers are allocated to two different tasks, some to producing, some to recruiting. That's going to be very important when we start to think about policy and, uh, and welfare. 